Hey guys, welcome back to T-Bones Tech. Today's video is my beginner guide to the brand new Canon EOS RP. So in this video, we're going to be going over the whole initial setup of this camera, and then we're going to be doing a dive into all the settings and features of this camera to help you guys get a good idea of how to use it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna give this camera some power. So we're gonna put the battery in, and the battery location is located here on the bottom of the EOS RP. We're just going to press this, and it's going to spring out just like that, and it's gonna open up, then we're going to take our battery. We're going to see a little arrow here. I'm just going to follow the arrow and we're going to put it in just like this with the Canon text facing the outside. Then we're just going to push it in until we hear a snap just like that. And then we're going to also see that there's an SD card slot right here. So of course we want to record our pictures or video to an SD card. We're going to take our SD card and I recommend using a faster SD card than just your normal SD card. If you are planning on recording 4K, I will leave a link in the description down below to the right SD card to film 4K with. But the SD card is just going to go in just like this with the front of it facing the back of the camera. And then we're just gonna push that in again until we hear a click. And now we are good to go. Then we can just close the panel again until we hear a click. And then we know that our camera is going to be secured. So next we're going to be putting a lens on the EOS RP and we are going to be using the included adapter to adapt an EF lens to this camera body. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the center cap here counterclockwise like this and then it's just going to come right out. Then we're going to take the mount adapter here and we're gonna take the back cover off again, twisting counterclockwise until it comes off just like that. And here we can see a red dot on the mount adapter and then we can also see that there is a red dot here on the EOS R body. So what we're going to do is we're just going to line them up just like this until we hear a nice click and it's in there solidly. And then we're just going to twist it clockwise again until we hear a click and now it is going to be mounted to the camera body. Then we're gonna basically repeat the process here with the mount adapter by twisting it off counterclockwise. And now we're going to take our lens and we're going to line up again the red dot here on the lens with the red dot here on the mount adapter. And we're going to just mount it and then twist it clockwise just like this again until we hear a click and then we're going to be good to go. Now our camera is set up with the lens adapter and the lens. All right, so next we're just going to turn this camera on and we can easily do so by just taking the switch and putting it from the off position to the on position and now our camera is going to be on. Now next we're just going to open up the LCD screen. We can do that by just pulling it right here and it's going to come out and swing out and it's actually going to twist. So we can actually twist it and then put it back in just like this. And by default, this camera is going to be on automatic mode. We're going to want to switch this to menu mode. That way we have access to every possible feature on this camera. So we're just gonna put it on menu mode just like that. It's super easy to change the modes and the dials. And now we are in menu mode. So now if we go to the menu, here we can start to see some very interesting settings. And the first setting here is going to be our image quality. So we're just going to give this a tap by hitting select here. And here we can control whether we are shooting it in raw or the different size of the JPEG that we're going to be shooting. So if we want to switch it to raw, we're just going to go over with the top dial here and we're going to twist it clockwise over to raw and then we're gonna hit select. And now we're going to shooting in raw and large. Raw images are great for post, but they're going to take up a lot more room on your SD card. So if you plan on editing your pictures, I definitely recommend shooting in raw. But if you don't plan on editing them really much at all, I would just go ahead and shoot the JPEG. So now let's go over to the third section in this red. And here we can see our ISO settings. And here we can change the max ISO that this camera is going to use when filming in automatic mode. And oddly enough, you can also control the minimum ISO. So if you want your camera to always be at a minimum ISO of 400 for whatever reason, again, you can adjust it right there. It's, it's pretty easy to adjust and really nice to have that as a feature on here. Next, we're going to go over to the four section. Here we can see our white balance. We can actually do a custom white balance. We can do automatic white balance, but here we can do daylight, uh, shade, uh, cloudy, tungsten light, fluorescent light, and a whole bunch of other different things uh, along with a custom white balance. So here's where we go to change our custom white balance. And with the custom white balance selected, again, you can use this dial here on the top. And here we can change it, and that's going to change our custom white balance uh, to whatever we want it to be. So we're just going to hit OK here after we just set it back to auto again. And then we're going to move over to the next section. 
And over here is going to be basically our HDR and long exposure section. We're not gonna talk about too much about that in today's video. And then moving over all the way to seven, we're going to see our automatic focusing mode. So here we can see the different types of AF mode. I really like the face tracking. It works very good. Spot AF and all these other modes don't work quite as good as the face tracking does. So I'm going to leave it on there for today's video. There's also going to be eye detection AF on this camera. And to enable that, we're just going to go over here and enable it, super easy. And eye detect works pretty good on this camera. Definitely nothing too crazy, but it's really good for some really nice, beautiful portraits. Next, we have some more manual focusing options that we're not going to go over. And over here in our movie settings, we can actually change uh, how we are going to be recording video on this camera. By default, it is set at 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. And then if we go up here, we can actually see that there's a 60 frames per second option, which is gonna be great if we want to slow down our video uh, by half speed. We're not gonna lose any frames. And then if we go over to the right, we can see some settings for recording in 720p at 30 or 60 frames a second. Unfortunately, you cannot record 1080p on this camera at 24 frames per second you guys are probably wondering, how can I film on 4K on this camera? And the way to record in 4K on this camera is you actually have to go over into the video mode. So taking a look at the top deck display, we're going to see that we are in menu mode. We're gonna have to go over all the way to video mode. And now that we're in video mode, we're just gonna hit menu. And here we can see that there's no longer an A option. For whatever reason, Canon drops options and they change the menu depending on what mode you're in. I don't know why, it's a little bit confusing, but now we're gonna go back over to the number one. And now here in the number one, we can see that our movie recording is now in 4K and we have a 4K option here at the top. 4K at 24 frames a second. So we're just gonna hit OK and that's how you can record 4K. Now let's record a quick video and we're gonna do so by pressing this red button here at the top of the camera. We're just gonna press this red button. And as you guys can see, there's a recording button and we can see the time that we've been recording in our battery life. And to stop it, we're just gonna press the button here on the top again and now we stop the recording. Now if you want to go back and see the video that we filmed, we're gonna press this blue box right here and we're going to just give that a little press and here we can see the playback of the video that we just filmed we can press the middle button right here because it is a touch screen and here we can see the video that we filmed. Now by default, the EOS RP is going to only be automatic in video, so you can't really change any of the settings other than the exposure compensation. So you can make things brighter or darker using the exposure compensation, but you can't change any of the shutter speed, your ISO, or any settings like that. It's just going to be automatic. So to put this camera into menu mode, where we're mostly going to want to be, we're just gonna hit the menu here, and then we're going to press on the shooting mode, and here we have the manual section. We're just gonna select that and hit OK and now we can completely go in here and we can change our shutter speed, we can change our aperture and we can change our ISO all completely ourselves. We don't have to let the camera try to figure it out. And when recording 4K on the EOS RP, unfortunately we don't have access to Canon's dual pixel autofocus. So instead we have some type of phase detection system, I believe it is. And as you guys can see here, it doesn't really work too, too well. I'm tapping to try to focus on different things and it's very slow and jaggedy and it makes a little bit of extra noise with the lens trying to hunt for focus. So unfortunately when recording 4K, this auto focusing system isn't going to be very reliable. So we're going to want to switch to menu mode. So we're just gonna press menu mode here on the lens. And we're gonna switch it into menu mode and then we're going to be able to completely manually control the lens. One of my methods for getting tack sharp focus is going to be to of course manually focus. And we're just going to press the magnifying glass right here in the top corner of the camera. We're gonna press on that and then we can see that we have a box. Now if we wanna zoom in again, we're gonna hit the info button um, and then we can control the view just like this. And now we are going to be zooming in five times. If we press it again, it's going to zoom in 10 times. And here we can see tons of detail. And here we can make sure we get the right focus. So by twisting the focus ring, we can pull in our subject into tack sharp focus. And now we have the exact focus that we want and it's going to be very sharp and nice. And that's the main way you're probably going to want to focus when filming 4K on this camera. All right, so we got a little distracted with the video mode. Let's move it back to manual mode and continue with the different settings. So we're going to go over to the blue playback section. And here we can see some different erase images and a whole bunch of different information about the pictures that you've already taken along with cropping information. And we're not gonna talk really much about that 
pretty self-explanatory, but we are going to go over to the wrench. And in this wrench is going to be a ton of different, very valuable information. Like in the first section of the wrench, we can go over here to format card and we can completely erase the card by formatting it. And it's gonna leave us with a completely blank SD card. So be very careful not to format your card. Otherwise you'll lose everything. Unless of course you've already backed up your card and you do want to format, in which case I definitely recommend doing that. So next let's go over to the number two section. Here we can see the brightness and some power saving modes along with our date and time. So clicking on the brightness here, we can see the brightness and we can change the screen, make it brighter or or darker just like this I have it on number seven just because I'm filming a video and you want the screen to be as bright as possible so you guys can see it but normally I recommend probably putting it over on five or maybe even six. Then over here in the third section of the wrench, we can change what video system we are recording. If we switch to PAL, I believe we can actually bump up the uh, max frame per second on 4K to 25 instead of 24, uh, but we're not going to be doing that in this video. Here we can also change the beep. So as you guys can see, there's going to be a beep. We can completely disable that. So now when I'm going around the menu, you're not going to have any beeps. And I'm actually just gonna leave it disabled for the remainder of this video. Then underneath that, we can see our battery information. So clicking on that, we can see our recharge performance and we can also see our battery life. And, um, and that can be very helpful if your battery is low. It's only going to have one little box here. And that means you're probably going to want to upgrade to a new battery very soon. And underneath that, there's going to be a sensor cleaning section. So I have it set to, and I think it is set by default to automatically clean your sensor uh, when you turn the camera on or off. And if you want to just manually clean the sensor, you can hit clean now. And now it's going to be cleaning the sensor and it's going to uh, do an okay job of cleaning the sensor. But when you hit clean sensor, it's going to do a very in-depth job and, and uh, make sure that there's not any dust in there or anything like that. So moving on here, we're going to see the four section and here we can see our shooting display information. And here we can go ahead and completely customize how we want to see our screen. So we can actually remove some screens if we don't wanna see the screen with the electronic level or something like that. So we're just going to leave it the way it is for right now. Over in the fifth section of the wrench, we can see our wireless communication settings, which is going to be where we're gonna to want to go if we want to set up our iPhone uh, to this camera. I will make a full video on how to set up the EOS RP to your camera, but we're going to not go over that in today's video. And then the last section of the wrench, there's just going to be some information about the software and some copyright information. And then the last two sections are going to be some more advanced sections that we're not going to talk about in today's Today's video there's really nothing too crazy other than just some more advanced settings and then adding your own customizable menu tab so to get out of the menu we're just going to press menu again just like this and now we're going to talk about exposure all right so next let's talk about exposure and here we have our camera set to manual mode and here we can see our shutter speed our aperture and our ISO settings if we want to make our scene darker we are going to stop up our aperture and we can do that by twisting the top dial here to the clockwise position. And here we can see our scene is getting darker with a faster shutter speed. So faster shutter speeds will result in darker pictures and slower shutter speeds are going to let more light into the sensor and going to make our scene brighter. Next, let's talk about aperture. And our aperture can be controlled over here by pressing on this and then again, twisting the dial or using the touch screen. And the lower the F number, the brighter our scene is going to be. So if we stop down our aperture from F4 to F5.6, you guys can see that the scene is going to get much darker. And then last but not least we have our ISO and here using a lower ISO number is going to give us a darker image and using a faster ISO like all the way over here at our max ISO of 40,000 it's going to give us a very bright image so what we need to going to do is we're going to need to stop down our shutter speed and then we're also going to have to stop down our aperture because our sensor is so sensitive to light we're going to need to do that now I definitely don't recommend using high ISOs because using a high ISO is going to give you a very noisy image so here I just took a picture at ISO 40,000 and I'm going to bring it down to ISO 400. Now I'm going to again adjust the X settings to bring back our exposure to get the picture nice and bright but using ISO 400. So now let's take a picture at ISO 400 and then zooming into our picture here at ISO 4000 we can see there's a lot of noise in that our image isn't 
too too crisp it actually is pretty decent but definitely nothing too crazy but now if we go over to the picture that we shot at iso 400 we can see there's a lot more detail and the picture is just much more crisp and better so if we're able to we want to use a low iso number like iso 800 and lower to get the sharpest and best quality pictures but that's about it for this video if you guys have any questions make sure to leave them in the comment section down below this was just a quick little beginner guide to using this camera kind of from start to finish i didn't go into any crazy in-depth settings but if you guys have any questions about in-depth settings or anything at all make sure to leave them in the comment section below i will try to answer them all but that's all i got for you guys in this video thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you all in the next one